My name is Tony Swanton. I'm a blacksmith. I make suits of armor and swords. My business is making weapons for movies, video games, television shows, commercials, all of that. For this build, Blizzard Entertainment has asked me to make the Ashbringer sword. It's quite a celebrated weapon in the world of Warcraft, and it's just awesome. Ashbringer was forged for the paladin Alexandra's Mograine, and named for its ability to slaughter the undead, leaving nothing but ash in its wake. The blade changed hands several times following Alexandra's murder, and was later used to shatter the Lich King's rune blade, Rossmorn, making it one of the most renowned weapons in Azeroth's history. This is a famous weapon in the lore of Warcraft. Very excited to be creating it. I'm not going to build this as drawn because it would weigh over 100 pounds, and no human would be able to carry that. Perhaps me, but, you know, no n mere mortal. First thing I'll do is kind of determine what I need to build this. I need to do a couple revisions to how it's drawn. I'm going to extend the grip to help the balance. And instead of making the blade a solid, thick blade as depicted in the game, I'm going to make it a quarter inch thick. The artwork showed a white glowing effect. Very cool looking, but doesn't exist in real life. I make a secondary copy and I contact cement it onto the actual steel I use and cut it out with a bandsaw. I'm not wearing gloves. Gloves would suck into the saw. The glove will actually be pulled into the blade and likely do more injury than if you're not wearing gloves. My hands are pretty callous, so I have built-in protection. I use a bandsaw to cut the steel like a hot knife going through butter. With this width of blade, I'm not going to be able to do this tight a radius easily. So I'm going to hand this off to Brian, and he will use a plasma cutter. Let's play with the power of the sun. 35 million degrees. It's 45,000 degrees, Brian. A plasma cutter uses an electrical arc and a compressed airstream going through it to vaporize the base metal, in this case, uh, carbon steel. At that point, I take it over to the belt grinder and grind it to the shape I want, just by eye. I use a uh, two-wheeled belt grinder using a 36-grit belt. It would take your finger off. After grinding the hollow grinds on the Birkin, I hand it off to Brian, and he uses an angle grinder. We're removing enough metal to remove probably 10 pounds, so we're hopefully going to get that down to about two or three pounds for the blade. After I've refined the blade to the thickness and the lightness that I want, we send it out to a commercial heat treater. This blade is too wide to fit into my electric heat treating ovens, but I will show the process using a miniature version of it by heat treating and tempering the blade. It gives a proper cutting edge and it makes it a real weapon. This should withstand almost any battle. After I get the blade back from heat treatment, I need to carve the runes into the side of the blade. I want to make certain that these runes are replicated exactly as they are in the game. That will be the end of the blade construction. The spine of the Ashbringer entail about 30 separate patterns. We'll take those patterns, lay them out, and uh, trace them onto sheets of bronze and cut them out with the bandsaw and the Beverly Shear. A Beverly Shear is a great tool in that I can cut a curved shape in sheet metal and I can cut thick metal using the leverage of the handle. We bend it on stakes and anvils using hammers. After I've folded the bronze to shape, I bring it over to the welding bench and Keely Arc weld it together. This is the first of 30 pieces and I have about 12 more hours of uh, welding to do. I could see these white glowing kind of gemstones surrounding elements of Ashbringer, and I thought the Mother of Pearl would be a phenomenal looking piece. I'm going to cut uh, cabochon stones out of the Mother of Pearl right here with the six inch diamond saw. However, Mother of Pearl is very toxic. The dust coming off of this is actually poisonous and lodges in your lungs. I'm going to be using a full respirator and also using water so that it doesn't get dust in the air, so I live a little bit longer.
then I'll make sockets that the mother of pearl go in, in little bezels, little strips of brass. So this is number one of 10. Uh, these will be set into the spine, pommel, and the dangle on Ashbringer. That will complete the construction of the bronze spine of Ashbringer. I'll be forging elements of the hilt out of bronze ingot by heating it to about 1,000 degrees in the forge. I'm using a power hammer, and I'm taking a red-hot piece of bronze ingot that's about 24 pounds. I get any hand, finger, or anything in there, it would smash it flat. Bones, it just doesn't care. I have a uh, chunk of forged bronze that I made earlier that I'm going to mill a slot. A milling machine is able to cut a oblong hole. That way, the, the tang, the inside of the handle, will fit through those spacers. This will be the last piece of the construction for Ashbringer's hilt. For the pommel, I'm going to take an ingot of bronze, manipulate those shapes on the anvil with a hand hammer. Once the bronze is cooled down enough to handle, I grind it to shape. OK, I forged the bronze portion of the pommel. There's a little blade on the top that I'm making out of chromoly steel. I'm going to put this in the forge, bring it to heat. Now I'm going to bring it over to the swedge block. Now I've formed the shape that I want. I'm going to take it to the burking. That will complete the construction of the pommel. Well, this is a piece of Delrin that we're using for the first step in making the grip for Ashbringer. Pretty substantial. So I'll cut the grip to length on the bandsaw, and then bring it over to the belt grinder and grind it to shape. The finishing touch on this is to cover the grip in red leather that matches the color for what we're calling the spine elements. A little detailing with some crisscross leather, and this grip will be done. Once I've created all the elements, the final stage is to put it all together. I've built Ashbringer in a modular manner. I will lay the spine onto the blade. This looks so good. It all gets slid together like a shish kebab. The hilt all stacks together, and the grip stacks on top of that. This is the final stage. If I'd made it solid, probably be 250 pounds. Let's see how much it actually weighs. Right at about 18 pounds. <laughs> Over 200 hours putting this thing together. This is Ashbringer. Let's go slash something. Yeah!